let us start properly. Turn off commenting and here we go. So this is the first image that we're looking at, um, which is, I mean, International Dance Day. Eat your heart out, okay, so there is just one person dancing in this image, but what a dance she is doing. I am gonna say that she is performing the ultimate burlesque. I mean, look at the, oh my God, I've turned into, what's his name, Bruno from, um, <laughs> didn't, that wasn't rehearsed, it just happened. I just, he just, there, his, the, the spirit of Bruno has, um, has entered me. Oh, oh my God, we're gonna get in trouble today. Um, but she's, you know, she's, I'm sorry, I'm not saying he's dead, by the way. I don't, as far as I know, he's very much alive and kicking. Um, so she, oh God. Okay. Um, she's doing this fantastic back bend, beautifully elegant arms. Look at that lovely pointed foot as well. I mean, you know, completely, um, completely elegant, uh, completely can imagine her very sensual moves. Um, if she is doing burlesque, I don't know how she's going to get that, uh, that top off. It's, that might be quite interesting. Let's just hope it's a, it's a, it's a quick unhook at the back. Um, and also, I'm going to say she doesn't seem too worried about the fact, uh, let's just bring this up a little bit closer for you, she doesn't seem too worried about the fact that there does appear to be a leopard in the room. I mean, perhaps that's part of her act, perhaps uh, um, perhaps it's just a, a family pet that she's, um, you know, that she's happy to accommodate. Um, <laughs> he doesn't look, he doesn't look, or he or she doesn't look terribly dangerous at this, at this point in time. You might also notice that there is a peacock standing on the, the windowsill. So we'll come back to that in a second. Um, and then of course we have this um, couple who are sitting here enjoying the spectacle very much indeed. They look like quite a wealthy couple, don't they? They look like quite a wealthy couple. He's kind of sitting on a throne. Um, if they're a wealthy couple, they probably need to up the uh, the idea of the, the, the feast that they're perhaps supposed to be having. But, um, but anyway, um, that's by the by. So he's sitting on his throne. They're both wearing crowns um they're both watching her intently um maybe for slightly different reasons um because have you guessed who the couple are yet i'm sure you have uh he is harold herod Her herald he's not herald at all he's herod and she is herodia and so the lady dancing, she is dancing, a dance that has become known as the Dance of the Seven Veils. So this is Salome. Ah, oh, I told you I'd picked a blinder for today. Uh, so Herod and Herodia, okay, we need to just dig into this a little bit uh, to understand the story of Salome. Um, Herod, this is actually Herod the second, who is the son of Herod, who was um, the, the, uh, the, the guy responsible for the massacre of the innocents and, 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 and so on in the, the Bible. So the, 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 the naughty Herod that we're, you know, we've all heard about. Um, so but he's not that one, he's the son. Um, he has a brother however, who is also called Herod. Oh, it's all going on today, the doorbell's going. Um, so he has a brother who's also called Herod. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back, I don't know, months, weeks, years. Let's go back, actually, let's go back years, okay? So years before this scene here, um, Herod gets married to Herodia. So Herod Philip. Got this. Herod Philip, son of other Herod. Too many Herods. <laughs> too many Herodias. Too many Herods. No, only one Herodia, but too many Herods. Um, Herod Philip gets married to Herodia. And they have a daughter. And they call their daughter Salome. Some years pass. And Herod Philip and Herodia fall out. And they get divorced. Herodia 
sets her sights on another Herod, Herod Philip's brother, um, who is Herod, um, who is called Herod Antipas, Jesus, uh, not called Jesus, Herod Antipas, and she marries him. Um, she gets what she wants and she, she marries him. Okay, so now Salome has got this stepfather um, and the stepfather is quite keen on Salome. Um, however, what the stepfather and the, or the, the person that the stepfather and the stepmother aren't very keen on, not the stepmother, the mother, Herodias, aren't very keen on is a guy called John the Baptist and the reason that they're not very keen on this guy called John the Baptist you might have heard of him he's quite a big figure in the Bible um, is because John the Baptist is vehemently against the fact are you keeping up by the way vehemently against the fact that Herodias has married um, this, this second Herod Herod Antipas. So he is, you know, he's kind of rallying against it. And Herodias says, you know, well, you know, you're a pretty important guy, darling Herod the um, second. You could get rid of John the Baptist. Um, and he's like, yeah, the thing is, John the Baptist is pretty, he's pretty popular. So I don't think that's going to be a very good plan, if I'm honest. Let's, let's not get rid of John the Baptist. Okay. So time goes on and it's Herod's birthday which is what we're seeing here and so Herodia thinks well okay I've got an idea I have hatched a plot she's hatched a plot and her plot is is that you know she says to, to Herod you know you're pretty fond of Salome aren't you and he's getting fonder and fonder as Salome is growing up into a beautiful she's only a teenage girl actually um, she's probably about 14 or 15 at the, the, the point that, um, that, that this is painted although she looks arguably a little bit older here um, and um, so so Herodias says you know if she dances for you, for, for, for you you know at your birthday feast you know what would you do in return and he's like you know what pretty much if she dances for me in the way that I'm hoping she's gonna dance for me she can have anything in return you can have anything you want in return and Herodias is like oh, okay so here we have Salome dancing her little heart out and possibly her clothes off in later versions of the story for Herod. Um, so this is actually a very, very late twen um, 20th and 19th century um, painting. So this dates to about 1898. It's a French artist by a French artist Armand Point, spelled like point, P-O-I-N-T. Um, and and so the, the the peacock and the I think that's a leopard. Um, he he was a, a sort of a symbolist painter. So I'm going to say that the the peacock was I'm going to say it because it's true. The peacock was um, a very popular um, symbol that had actually become related to the story of Salome um, only five or so years before actually with um, Oscar Wilde's play. So Oscar Wilde wrote a one-act play called Salome where actually he coined the phrase Dance of the Seven Veils. Until then no it was just the, the Dance of Salome but he coined the, the phrase the Dance of the Seven Veils so, so with the um, with the implication of the, the, the striptease. And Aubrey Beardsley uh, illustrated the, um, the, um, the, the play and in his illustrations, I'll show you one of them, um, in his illustrations he used the motif of the peacock over and over again. Um, so why was this? The, the, uh, the, the peacock was already quite popular in the 19th century um, as a symbol of um, sort of slightly decadence but extravagance wealth it was quite ex exotic um, it was it was used all over the place the peacock feathers were used in, in in all sorts of decorations so it was quite prevalent the peacock over time has been um, a symbol of um, of uh, beauty and of wealth which both 
correspond quite well to the, the story of Salome, uh, but also um, the, well, actually, you know, yeah, the, the, the peacock has been a symbol of a lot of things. Um, very, um, it was uh, Hera's attribute, it is here is attribute so if we're going back into greek mythology it has meanings there also it could mean um a resurrection in a christian context not so much here i think so i think here it's it's all about the the extravagance and the beauty so i think um so i think he's referencing in this um in this the um Oscar Wilde's play but also this you know the extravagance and the beauty and the exotic exoticism of the peacock just notice as well I love this it's just a beautifully um the beautiful composition and that just the way that the, the the peacock and the sweep of the the peacock's tail feathers move down echoing the the, the sweep of her body I think it's it's really it's it's um it's beautifully beautifully um designed um uh composed this this painting um and then the leopard or the um the the wild cat elegant sleek but a, a hunter or a huntress so um so i think that comes on to the the next part of the story which isn't of course told here so we can just go oh okay this is a lovely little dance but of course herod has said that he will give anything for Salome to dance for him. What does Herodias, his uh, scheming wife, persuade Salome to ask for? Well, it's not a new dolly, I'm going to tell you that. Uh, no, enter John the Baptist and of course what Salome asks for is John the Baptist's head on a platter. Nice. So Herod, you know, he's like, no, really? You know, anything? Seriously? You want that? Um, and she said, yeah, 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 that's what mum's told me to ask for. That's what I'm asking for. And so reluctantly, he, um, he exceeds. Although, as I say, you wouldn't know that from this painting. Um, you know, it's very much all about the, the exoticism and the beauty and the sensuality um, of, the, of the, the dance. Rather many centuries before, um, an artist called Fra Lippi, now he was, um, as you can tell by his name, Fra, Father Lippi, um, he was a monk, but he, he ran off with a nun and got her pregnant. Um, uh, so this is a fresco of the, well, it's actually called Herod's Feast because it doesn't just depict the dance of Salome. I will bring up some um, some closer images later. But this is a mid 15th century fresco in the Prato, um, the uh, cathedral in uh, in Tuscany, in Italy. Um, so you have here. So this does tell the story. Okay. So this isn't just so you've got the sort of slightly sensual dance in the center. So she's, she's just center left. Um, let me show you. Um, there she is doing her little dance not looking quite so happy I'm gonna say she's um, you know she's I don't think she's just putting as much into it as our uh, late 19th century Salome is she um, she's yeah she knows what's coming um, because here she is again so this is sort of center left of the fresco um, and you can see to her left hand side um, that the figures would have been more sorry I'm pointing like I'm pointing I'm pointing at my phone like you can you can see what I'm pointing at I'm just I suppose I'm pointing at you um, but uh, they would have been more defined but they've um, over over the the years the paint has become translucent so um so they're sort of uh, ghostly figures perhaps that's a little bit um, appropriate um, so let's show you what's going on right to the very left of the painting so here we go so this is an example where we have the same person several times in one painting so this is Salome right over to the left hand side of the fresco uh, with a platter and poor old John the Baptist has been decapitated and his head is being placed on this platter um, she's looking rather revulsed as, as well she might um, and he's yeah, he, no, oh, I don't know. He, he's kind of like, oh, a bit surprised as well. He might be, um, and then here she is again, 
right on the other hand, uh, right on the other side of the painting, on the right hand side of the painting, presenting um, the head of John the Baptist to Herodias, who seems to be pointing over at um, Herod, who maybe, I don't know, maybe he's so in love with Herodias that he can't stop looking at her, or maybe he just doesn't want to look at the, the head on the platter. So, so this, this is um, a great example, actually, of 15th century fresco in which the, the whole story is told in, uh, in one big image. There is just to the right hand side of Herodias another couple um, who kind of make me, you know what I'm like, they make me giggle out. Like, so what's this couple doing on the right hand side? I mean, are they, you know, is he protecting her, you know, from the revolting sight of a head being brought to the table on a platter? Um, or are they actually just about to go in for a cheeky snog while everybody is distracted? I'll let you think about that. Some artists, however, just to finish up, um, some artists, there we go, they just didn't bother with the dance at all. Some artists just went straight in for the head on the platter look, um, all a little bit gory, um, you know, oof, he's got a big stretch of neck that uh, that is being exposed there, echoed rather um, cunningly, I'm going to say, by the necklace on this um, very elegant looking lady who's kind of like, she just, she looks like she's sort of come out with, you know, a, a tray of biscuits or something, doesn't she? Hi! Um, so she is, uh, it is a particular look that she's channeling and this would have been a very, very sexy look for the women, uh, well for the men I guess, or for everybody at the court of Wittenberg um, in, in Germany in the, sort of the 1530s this would be. Um, so she is an ideal beauty of the Wittenberg court painted by Lucas Cranach the Elder. Um, and I'm saying ideal beauty, it's the, the colour of the hair, the very high forehead, um, this kind of odd fancy headdress, the, the, the sort of small um, small features, the, the sort of pointy features, and then the, the, the clothes would have been, um, so fashion historians would have a, a field day with this because uh, the, the, the clothes are very much um, what would have been worn in the, the, the courts in, in, in those times. So, so basically, Lucas Cranach, the elder, is depicting um, you know, one of the courtly ladies very, very happily just looking out at us, not a care in the world, with this horrific severed head on a platter in front of her. And this isn't the only time he painted this. He painted a lot of versions of this this story in a very similar vein. I mean, sometimes the lady's looking a little bit more troubled, mostly not at all, um, mostly sort of a little bit detached, almost icy, but haughty, always well-dressed, always elegant, um, and uh, and yeah, with this with the disgusting severed head. Um, quite small images, so painted for private patrons, so I'm gonna say that judging by the number that he did of, um, of these images, um, the number that, that still survive, it was a very, very popular subject in early 16th century Germany. Odd! Maybe, I don't know, the, the, the thrill of the, uh, the seductive horror, I don't know. Early 16th century versions of horror, I guess. Uh, still has a place today, doesn't it? So there we are, Salome from her beautiful seductive dance um, through to the lovely lady we see in front of us who is holding a very realistic looking John the Baptist's head on a platter, all because her mum married another Herod <laughs> and John the Baptist didn't like it and, uh, and she got her revenge. It's not a lady I want to know, I have to say. Not a lady I want to know. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to turn back comments. Um, so, yes. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, a few people have joined. Um, so.
So I did have, I said at the, the beginning, some of you may have missed it, I did have a request last week to include a little bit of gore and since it was International Dance Day today, I thought, well, there's only one story that is going to cut the mustard today um, and that's Salome and that's what we did. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope for International Dance Day, everyone's going to go out and have a little dance. Um, why not? The sun is shining, at least it is where I am, um, and it's nearly May, and in the UK we're nearly able to meet people inside, um, and we can meet people outside, so um, yeah. It's all looking up, isn't it? Not for John the Baptist, but it's all looking up <laughs> for the rest of us. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I do wish you a very happy Thursday and Friday and a very happy weekend. I will see you next Thursday when, goodness knows, I don't know what we'll do next Thursday, something or other. Um, I will let you know. And yeah, have a good day. Thank you very, very much for joining. Bye everyone. Bye.